Shall we get started? Okay. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Anyway, all that's left. But please, you all stayed for me, by the way. Uh, my name is Wim Buters from Aspiritas. We've had a number of talks already today about immersed compute. My talk is a bit different, I think, I hope. Uh, also, because of my background, I'm not an engineer as such. I've spent quite, spent quite some time in steel making and have been deeply engaged in energy and massive energy consumption. Last 10 years, I worked with an engineering company designing data centers, not as an engineer, but let's say leading a business unit. And since half a year, I'm with Aspiritas. And the reason for doing so is about energy. So that's the focal theme of my presentation. When you look at what we did so far, which is quite an achievement when you take into account the, the time we are, let's say, professional in this business, maybe some 20 years. We focused for many years on PoE, and we defined it as a unique quantity already. And it has been for many years the uh, measuring point to measure data centers. Uh, I would say, and you may disagree or not, but I think with technology available to, to perform well below 2 and close to 1.1, not everywhere, but at many places. And what you also see today is uh, there's an impact of society on things that are allowed or not. It's not only technology, environment is playing a role in if, if there will be something built, yes or no, and what. So there's politics and press of society. And for those who were not in, in well uh, uh, up to speed on PoE, it's below there. It's the total energy of the facility divided by the pure IT part. So this is what uh, the total com community has done over the years. Let's say if, if I would plot uh, past practice, these, by the way, is energy consumption split down in um, IT, which is the 100% the, the, the level, more or less. Part of which is onboard cooling, of course. Then the red is uh, losses on power. And the blue one is the cooling infrastructure. What you see, you go down from past on a PUE of 1.75 to 1.25, maybe, with OCP make, making sim things uh, simpler and more energy efficient, go in the direction of one. And of course, the big challenge is what to do after that. There's a lot of heat generated by a facility. It has value. It's not the biggest value, but it has value. But also for society, it has value and impact on decision making. So what are, what are we going to do with that? OK, happy it's back again. Uh, what we all see is the business is growing like hell. It's steady over tens of years with a 10% or more. You find all kinds of numbers, but it's, it's roughly in this area. This industry is a major player in energy consumption globally, which by the biggest part is still fossil uh, fuel powered. Uh, you know there was a, a very courageous attempt last year in Poland to make an agreement on, on let's say, changing uh, climate change which is quite difficult. But I think we as a business taking maybe five or six percent of the energy production over the, the complete globe, it's up to us as well to take the in initiative apart from the, uh, let's say, the leaders or the political leaders. So what, what do we need to do? It has something to do with reuse of energy. And I know it has been discussed many times in the past, but I think I convince you that it's, it's a real thing to be done. It's not yet defined, but some people say the energy re re reuse efficiency is something, it, it's a bit like PoE, but you may correct for the power that you reuse. That means the more you reuse, the lower the ERE is, which sounds a bit strange, but nevertheless, there's value in doing things like this. Then when you look at the data center facility and what you, I think we should realize more and more, it is something to do with IT, with heat. Uh, people say it's waste heat, but we'd rather say it's excess heat. Electricity, also carbon dioxide, if not from the generators, from the power plant that is fueling the data center. And there's also something on energy storage, if it, be it batteries or be it heat maybe. So if you take the data center as a focal point, there are at least two value streams going through your facilities. It's the IT value stream, which is green, and something with energy that's red. And we need to cleverly combine them and do something good with that. What I think we need to do is combine these in space and time. It sounds a bit scientific, but it's, uh, it's not meant like that. This is a uh, 
a picture we shared as, as our spirits, but also on behalf of, let's say, the community to a major energy supplier. And we said, if you look at what's happening, you have some companies have uh, heat uh, um, supplied to private persons, to offices. That same company may supply electricity to data centers. So what you see these days is that you have at least two streams. And if you have, a, for let's say for the case of the example, a data center of one megawatt, you may need to supply 1.3 or so. And you, if you have a, an office block, you may need to close to a megawatt on average to heat the houses. So for this situation, which is what I state, what is a current state, you need 2.3 megawatts delta power. Would it be nice if in some point in the future we could do it like this? That means take the excess heat and somehow be able to use that for a second purpose, a second part in life. What you'll notice is that the 2.3 megawatts for this, for the, let's say, current situation goes down to one. That means we half the energy that's needed for this future situation. Of course, this is not easy, otherwise it would have been done already. But if we would do something like this, we have at least combined the, and that's because that's part of the job, the heat generation at the location where you need to have it, because like, uh, unlike IT, you cannot uh, transport heat too far. That means you need to generate it where you need it. If you take it a step beyond, and you want to combine it in space and time, there's something like storage. You all, we all know that there's something to be stored on the electrical side. You need to buffer against things that change, if you like it or not. But at the same time, you, you will notice that if you are supplying heat to a third party, you need some storage because of seasons, because of day and night, maybe. So this is not an easy job. Certainly not, because the biggest part of this community is only in this, maybe, I think it works. <laughs> this is my pointer. We work over there, but there's a lot around us that will give their influence on our business. And we can on the one hand say, well, it doesn't happen. I bet you it will happen. So in this case, you talk about utility supply management and control. That means you need to involve the energy suppliers, clever guys that have the data of the energy production, energy consumption, temperatures, uh, forecast of the weather and things like that to make it really clever. That means companies, the likes of Siemens or IBM, are quite interested in that part, and the energy companies as well. So this is a nice challenge. It's not easy, but I think this community sh should think on, if we go this way, how to do that. Since I'm European, I just have some uh, European examples. But what's happening in, well, I think you know it all, in Scandinavia, there's a number of initiatives to reuse heat from data center facilities. I think we all know that practice is a bit worse than they say, but nevertheless, the direction has been chosen. Uh, specific for the Netherlands, but it will spread, I think, there's a transition from heating, changing from uh, gas to something else. Um, in Europe and beyond thermal energy storage in the soil and in the, in, the, in the ground, it's mature and common practice. If you didn't know that it, only in the Netherlands there's more than a few hundreds of these sources drilled for storage. So it's, it's not a big deal, but you need to think about it. There are also initiatives on uh, large-scale electro, electro buffering to buffer on the one hand side the data center facility, but on the supply side to give some peak shaving to the utility company. It's a strange thing because you sell your asset twice, but nevertheless it's, it's intriguing to see can it work. Another one I like very much, it's a French company that uh, have a business where they sell compute to clients and heat to other people. And they put the compute at private pe people and there we have two businesses running at the same time, connected by technology, but split from each other. So let's say that's a small scale example of using and seeing value in waste heat. And I think our challenge is to do it at a large scale. Just, I, I saw an article on Volkswagen in Germany who was, uh, let's say, uh, using excess heat from his facility on a still moderate level to, uh, to give to neighboring people in the area. I think bottom line, um, Working in, in a good way on waste heat will be a license to operate. In the Netherlands, there's a limit on PUE to get a building permit. 
uh, and also on waste seas disposal, there's a limit in, in Frankfurt, for instance, to, to be allowed to build a data center, otherwise you get taxed. I know tax is not popular in every country, also not in Europe, but this, this will happen. And you can either ignore it or anticipate on it. So, what, so who are the companies involved in all of this? And, and what do you need to organize? Or which parts do you need to get together to get it done? And this is in alphabetical order just to take any questions out. It's consumers of CO2, and that's, let's say, how it started at some facilities where they found out they need CO2 for greenhouses. When you have CO2, you have heat, that's also nice, but also some electricity. What to do with the electricity? Consumers of heat, that's a lot of it, it's basically all of us and industry as well. And then in the data center domain is the operators, stroke owners, but also designers and users. Government will play their role on a local scale, urban planners and developers but also the utility providers. So the game, it's a big game. And uh, that's why I, I, I chose to have this story here because you need to uh, tell this story a few times before it lands. I'm not the first one giving this story. Maybe a bit longer, a bit more, a bit more explicit, explicit uh, maybe a bit more up to date. It will happen. And some companies do see that. I mean, this is the uh, companies we as, I should say, as a spirit that's not involved with to get us done. So it's a, it's a mix of energy companies, uh, wannabe energy companies, ourselves, uh, uh, planners, um, um, real estate owners. They all see that things will change and are like, having long-term plans on how to do that, what does it mean for the facility. The good news is that when you look at the internet, and it's not all true what you see over there, but uh, quite some is, of course, um, all hyperscalers use the word liquid, and all of them have somehow plans to get it done. So that's not strange. I think it's up to us to see the bigger scene and get it done. If I go back again to the data center facility as such, what you, what you see is you think about, you need to think about liquid, but the, I always say most data centers have liquid. The only question is how far is it from the IT? That's it's quite remote in the conventional uh, crack unit uh, cool data centers where you just have a remote water, water system, of course. But it's it, going from top to down, it's getting closer and closer to your IT. It's also the trend you see. We try to bring it more to the IT because IT is getting hotter and we need to be more efficient. So that's a change I see. These days, we still have adiabatic uh, dry-cool combinations, uh, which you also see, I also heard it today and yesterday as well. Also in, in, in California, water is an issue. So it's not quite favorable to be fond on adiabatic because there's a limit to that. Chillers will be phased out, I think. So you need to think about, uh, and then within the facility and outside, how about liquid, how to do that. You can do it on a project basis, it can be policy driven, but bottom line, that's also what we always say as a spirit us, there needs to be a sound business case behind it. Be it via taxes or something else, but there needs to be money, bottom line, to conclude, does it make sense, yes or no. Of course, from a technology perspective, there are quite some technologies available, heat pumps, uh, thoughts about clever heat grids and temperature chaining, I'll tell a few things on that, but not too much. Let's say heat what, what people call generation four heat grids are clever grids that go into low temperature, that integrate, let's say, waste heat and renewable heat and see how you can use that on a local scale. It's about really thinking ahead and thinking uh, in time and space about heat. This needs to go live and get attention, but as well as the hard part in the facility. And what I've quoted here are, are liquid temperatures in conventional systems um, indirect liquid to chips, uh, liquid uh, cooling, let's say rear cooling, the direct liquid to chip, or uh, as a spirit and others do, completely immersed. What you see, you have ranges of liquid water temperatures going out that you could use. And on the top part, you see what we today call typical. On the bottom line is what, you, what we see as extreme, but the extreme of today will be typical of tomorrow. So we should think about how to use this technology we've, have, we've all developed already in future facilities. 
and that can that can be done by thinking cleverly. Can I combine technology because uh, it's it's asked for a simple example. Not all storage can be immersed. Storage doesn't give a lot of heat, so there's no need to make a big fuss about storage and cooling. So just take a simple uh, heat uh, uh, door a heat exchanger for a rack and cool your storage. And by the way, the door will also cool the more or less cool the white space as well, apart from the water part. So what you could do is think about cleverly combining technologies and let's say and ramping up the temperature from pretty cold in to pretty high out. And just to trigger your mind a bit with what you could do, uh, this is a, a, a imaginary white space with on the left hand side uh, rear the coolers on the uh, inter internal part uh, directly to chip and on the right hand side another combination. And what you see you go up in temperature from left to right. We have a client at the moment who's combining three technologies in a single facility also to show it can be done, it works. You need to do some thinking, but I think that's what we're here for, to do the thinking and come to the clever solutions. And by the way, what you do by combining cleverly, you stay at a low water volume instead of having masses of rather cold water floating around. This is far more pumping efficiency as well, of course. So what do we need to be doing? And I'm wrapping up more or less. I think we need to uh, focus on external heat consumption. That means cooling is not part anymore of a facility. Cooling will be done by someone else. But at the same time, it means you need to have a kind of a guarantee that they will cool because you give to someone else what has been and still is a key part of your facility, the cooling. Not popular, but it happens. Uh, government will, 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 will take their action, as they do already now in, in some places. So they need to give incentives, I would say, to, to, to guide and to steer technology in the direction we all need to go to in the end. I think they should stimulate industry as well. There was a nice article yesterday about a big French initiative on a data center facility, a big one where the waste heat will be used for drying uh, vegetables in the same area. It's a nice way of thinking, nice project example, but it could be the first of many, of course. I think in general we should have more uh, heating networks, certainly where, let's say, on a standard basis heat is needed. Uh, preferably at low temperatures because that will help all of us. A high temperature is very nice, of course. Um, for sure, having a long-term view, that means TCO and not just look at the investment. CapEx, very nice, but CapEx is many times misleading, more or less. PUE is nice, uh, use it, but it's not the only thing to look at, I would say. And the other part is, uh, when you really dig into it, and when the clever guys do one PUE is of in interest, of importance, you can play with it and have a very good PUE, but a lousy performance. That means a very inefficient facility. And that's why we need to be open and clear on what makes sense for us as a business. Because as said, we use 5% of the energy already, and growing. So finally, for all of us, I would say um, I'm not being uh, dramatic on this, but uh, time is running out. Many things are happening. Um, government is changing as well, and this is taking reactions. So let's hurry. I think we're in a good way to standardize via OCP. But I think at the same time, we here should set the standards also for something that is still quite fake. We did it already for Azure, but uh, now I think we should say something about uh, when you have uh, liquid uh, cooling, give your preference on water temperature levels and so on. Make some steering to guide us in the right direction. The positive part of the message is, of course, we have all the skills and knowledge. There's, it's not rocket science. It's all there. It's a matter of cleverly combining. Uh, nowadays, I say the, the, the challenges we have are nice and good, that we know them, but we are not organized as companies to tackle them. We always need some kind of partnerships, and that's not always easy, but it will be done. So bottom line, it's not as much as what's in the facility, but also by and large what's around it, and that will be our business. Thank you. Questions? <laughs> I like the question because in the end all heat will in the end come out. But the point is if you blow it into the air, 
it, it replaces other heat. You, let's say it could replace other heat that then still has a carbon footprint. But in the end, what you use in your house, in the end, it goes out as well. So I think it's the clever way of using, if you can, many times energy. And we can do it in, in a clever way by first use the electricity, and then use the heat. That's twice the carbon, twice the use of the same carbon footprint. If that answers your question. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Uh, a big part that you highlighted, if I can correctly, was the uh, municipalities. How do, yeah. how do they get um, aligned and prepared to receive waste heat? And I, I was uh, pleasantly surprised once I talked to Green IT Amsterdam. Yeah. Well, the correct answer is yes, maybe. <laughs> I, I, to, to be honest, I don't know. When I see the struggle that in Poland, which is, let's say, on, on a bit higher level to agree on, on guidelines, it's difficult. We do it on a very specific level, but we also part of that. I think it needs to be attacked from mul multiple angles. And uh, when I see speaking for Europe, how difficult it is to get aligned on, on, on any topic, it will be a big struggle. So I think it would be courageous of, of, of us as a, as a market segment to do it like that. And of course, there's, there's a global uh, demand on change of, of, of carbon footprint. And it would be really nice if somehow out of this, there could be a, a signal how we take it up as a business. Uh, sorry. It, it is, but the point is, it's not my personal domain, nor from, of our company. But, but, but I agree with you, let's say it's, it's the 100%. And if you can take that down and say, okay, we need, we need less for that, you have more freedom to, to use the electricity you still have left. So IT efficiency is always a good point, always. But that's, yeah, maybe it's, I stepped over because it's a, it's a, it's a no-brainer to not, not being a fan of you. But of, of course we should. Yeah. Of course. To that point, you probably know the, the green grid has struggled for years to try to figure out what might be the right metric for IT performance. Yeah. Is it, you know, throughput for networking, uh, you know, storage efficiency, and then processing efficiency. The best it did, they do have a white paper on being able to measure the capacity of your IT performance per power. No thresholds on what's good or bad, but they do have a way to at least a standard on how yeah. to measure it. I remember that, and that's sort of in measuring your improvements in your own facilities, IT operations, you know, yeah. over a certain amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. The greatest yeah. opportunities are going to come as IT improves its efficiencies just because of the, the technology we're using, the software we're using, yeah. the hardware we're using. Yeah. I fully agree with you. But that's, uh, so I would say please carry on doing so. <laughs> Yeah. Extreme, yeah. Have you have you done any testing like longer term with you know, electronics and exposure? To uh, usually, that's that's part that's part of our certification process to ensure it works at those temperatures. To be honest, I don't know how long we had the 65 degrees, but I'm I'm pretty sure given developments on chips and the the cleverness of 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 of, of, of cooling uh, of, of heat sinks on them that we'll be able to lift them a bit. Yeah, uh, for instance, at the moment we work also with, with vapor chambers on, on, on the chips to, to, to keep them cool and, and just take it quickly out and then with the liquid take it further on. So I think we can. And I've, I'm also, let's say, I have quite some working experience and I know that many times what's the, the max today is typical tomorrow. So I'm, I'm quite optimistic on that. Yeah. Yes, please. That's, I, I can only speak for, for, for my country where we do it like that, and that's a, that defined like a, a flow in temperature. 
So, you, so that's what you get. But what you see if it's there, but that's also a bit of politics. There's a debate because you, you pay the consumption, but then the consumption is part of the infrastructure as well. And you cannot, if your uh, house has been built for, uh, let's say, uh, district heating, you cannot do something else. So you are bound to a single supplier. And, and people don't feel comfortable with that. But, but back to your question, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a uh, temperature times volume more or less, and then expressed into, into money. Yeah. Okay? Thank you all. <laughs>